So we're here with Lisa Mattis, the executive director of Big City Mountaineers. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Lisa. Thank you. Yeah, and for our viewers that might not be familiar, tell us a little bit about the work that Big City Mountaineers does. Big City Mountaineers enhances the lives of under-resourced urban youth, and we do that with transformative wilderness programs that instill critical life skills. Okay, and so underserved urban youth, can you explain that a little more? What exactly does that mean to you guys? Yeah, most of the kids that we work with are between 13 and 18. They come from urban communities and communities that generally don't have a lot of resources and have never had access to the wilderness. Most of our kids have never been out of their neighborhoods before. Gotcha. So there, there's a big stretch between what their daily life is like and living in the wilderness. And in that kind of environment, their skills can grow and the learning that they can apply to their life really grows. Gotcha. So what kinds of activities or programs are you guys delivering? We deliver backpacking and canoeing courses. In, in our backpacking programs, we're in Denver and um, the Bay Area, the Pacific Northwest, and then in the Boundary Waters, we deliver canoeing programs. And we see those activities as the way for kids to get those critical life skills. Mm -hmm. And those skills sound like um, integrity, self-esteem, decision-making capabilities, responsibility, communication skills. There are lists like that. Lots of internal things that kids wouldn't necessarily get in their own communities okay. without our help. And so when, when somebody um, is interested, you know, basically how do people get involved? How do the, the urban youth end up applying to be a part of it? That's what's unique and different about Big City Mountaineers. Okay. We work with local partner agencies. Sometimes they're boys and girls clubs, sometimes they're big brothers, big sisters, other times YMCA groups and smaller nonprofit organizations that serve their local community. We source the kids from those agencies and consider them an active partner in delivering our programs. We also work with caring adult volunteers and they act as mentors on the trip. So when you go out into the wilderness, not only do you carry your agency with you, in a support mechanism. You also carry a group of volunteers who have really paid to be there with you and to invest in you as a youth and to teach you those critical life skills and help you develop. So when somebody gets involved and let's say they're going on a, a it's a backpacking related trip, uh, what is, uh, you know, what's that kind of like? Are they out for two weeks and then you're, they're done with them? Is it kind of an ongoing thing where they're involved with the organization for a period of time? How does that work? We spend time with those kids before that Catalyst Wilderness experience and afterwards. So there are a series of programs, probably a day or maybe two days, before they go out for this big Catalyst experience with their volunteers who act as mentors. And that program is about a week long. And then after they come back, we return them to their community and their agency to implement what they learned and also to, to provide carry-on programs a day and overnight to make sure that what they've learned is embedded in their life. So what, what they've learned and in, in embedding those things in their life, when you guys go back and, and talk with the people that have gone through your programs, what kind of an impact are, are you seeing that you're making on their lives? Yeah, lives change. So I'll tell you my own personal story too. Okay. I, uh, I, I found Big City Mountaineers five years ago or so, and my first experience was in Colorado. Um, we were in the Elk Mountains, and we went up with a group of girls from Houston. And these girls had never been out of their neighborhoods. Most of them didn't have any strong parent in their life. Um, my dad's in jail. My mom isn't really present in my life. Um, I live with my grandmother. That happened a lot. And we heard that from a lot of those kids. And one girl in particular, Laura, 90 pounds, stick of a kid, walking up the trail and says, you know, I think I might be pregnant. And we thought, what do you do with that? I don't know. Let's motor up the trail a little bit and see how it goes. Later she says, you know, I think I need to get married next year. She's 14 years old. I think I need to get married to be safe in my community. What do we do with that? I don't know. Let's spend some time with her, motor up the trail, see how it goes. By the end of the trip, she said, you know what? I'm not pregnant. I am not going to get married. I don't need to to be safe in my community because I know I can keep myself safe and I know how to do that now. And, you know, when the instructor was a bit challenged with something, she walked over and grabbed the instructor's pack, threw it on her own back along with her own pack, and carried both packs out of the wilderness and led us home. 
And that's the kind of empowerment that you see. The expression of that is, is Laura, an individual, empowered and walking out of the wilderness on her own two feet. What she uses in her life, what she learned underneath that, are those critical life skills like integrity and self-esteem and responsibility and decision-making skills. Wow, that's very cool stuff. So to, to go back maybe to the beginning, you guys have now six offices around the country, is that right? We run our programs in, in four locations and okay. we're looking to grow in the next couple of years as well. Okay. Uh, we work with kids all over the country okay. and okay. volunteers all over the country as well. I got you. And which was the first office and how did it all get started? In fact, the first office was in, you know, probably in the home of our, of our, uh, our founder, Jim sure. Kern, who is also the founder of, of the Florida Trails Association okay. and okay. Uh, the American Hiking Society. Oh, very Jim, cool. Yeah. He decided he wanted to go out in the woods. He invited his son, and his son couldn't go, so he decided to call somebody and figure out if he could take a kid who couldn't afford it. Wow. And Big City Mountaineers was born. He went out and he learned that, that when he invested his time, that kids got a lot out of it, and he got as much as the kids did. Gotcha. gotcha. And so, that was in Florida. Oh, really? Okay. Five years ago. Yeah. Neat. And then how has the organization expanded over that time? You know, what... How, you know, tell a little bit about the history of how it went from Jim in his house in Florida to, to where it's at today. I think that the big strength about Big City Mountaineers, there are three things. The, the differentiators for us are, one, we work with partner agencies and that, that's the core backbone of what we do. Okay. That, okay. that relationship with agencies is solid and an essential part of our program. Second, that we work with committed adult volunteers and that this whole program doesn't work without that investment. That these are people who give a week of their time to come out and help our kids learn critical life skills. So that's the second piece. And the third is, what happens at the end? What are the results of all this wilderness experience? What we find is that when kids tell us what they learned, it equates to an increased likeliness to stay in school, a reduction in violence, and a reduction in drug use. And those are really the three things that we talk about at the end of a BCM program that we'd like for kids to realize. Hmm. And so I wanted to ask you about the, the, the second thing you touched on there, the volunteers and, and how people get involved, but also what kind of people are you looking for? Are they all like hardcore mountain climbers that are volunteering and have, you know, mad outdoor skills or tell me a little Absolutely bit about not. Okay. Absolutely okay. not. I, I definitely don't have mad outdoor skills. So all right. <laughs> I'm not a volunteer myself. Um, all right. No, we're, we're looking for people like you and me, people who are committed to helping kids get the critical life skills that they need to be successful in the world. And um, there are three ways to get involved. It's really simple. The first is you can volunteer on a trip, and we can help you do that. The second is, this is a really nice one because it actually challenges the participants. You can go on a summit for someone climb. Mm -hmm. It's a cause-related marketing program for us that feeds dollars to our kids, just like the Avon Breast Cancer Walk. Instead of walking along a street, you climb major mountains, iconic peaks in North America. Really, you know, tremendous. It's a tremendous program. Um, very cool stuff. So you talked about that you guys are looking to continue to grow. What, what kinds of things are you you're trying to do? Any, any insight into what we can expect from, from BCM over the next? Yes, we can't wait to grow. And in fact, we're on a path to do that right now. We're looking to serve more kids and go to more locations in the next couple of years. And we could use the help. And if you're interested, and this looks like something that your community needs, if you've got under-resourced urban kids, yeah. you think they need help, and you're with a partner agency, or you're by yourself and you, and you see this every day in your community, okay. call us. Let us know. Send us an email. Yeah. Info at citymountaineers.org. Gotcha. Gotcha. So um, you don't really have target cities that you're planning to go to next, you're still looking for the right fits? Is that, is that I would fair? say that we do. We've got some ideas, and okay. uh, Florida's on the list, and right. Minnesota's on the list, and there are a couple others as well. Um, yeah. but, but what we find is that um, when folks reach out to us and tell us what's needed in their community, that it works a lot better. Very neat. So are you simply looking to expand into new cities and broaden your reach, or are you looking to bolster your programs and increase the offering that way as well? I'd say both. Okay. 
in the in the cities that we're in already we want to go deeper and we want to talk to more partners and probably expand our work with other kinds of partner organizations mm -hmm. government agencies and um, lots of government agencies um, school districts and different types of community-based organizations that are really local in their strength very cool so um I don't have any more questions, um, but how can people get involved? You said they can email at info and they can go to bigcitymountaineers.org, is that right? Correct. I think those are the best ways and uh, feel free to call us directly. And the number is 303-271-9200. All right. Well, hey, really appreciate you being here with us today. I think I think the Thank stuff you guys are doing is awesome. And, and, Thank you. you know, we, um, I know St. Louis could use some help in that area. You so should put it. <laughs> Can't you should put, you. Put St. Louis on your short list. <laughs> Great. Good. Let's talk about that. Thank yeah, you very much. Thank you. And as always, this is Camping Gear TV. I'm Josh, and this is Lisa, and we will see you next time.